Hello there and welcome to BLS 006 Beeman live stream show and tell today with Lars in the studio. Lars, how are you doing? Hello, I'm very good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you very much. Uh, I think most people watching this channel already know Lars, but uh, for those of you who don't, maybe you can quickly introduce yourself and tell uh, also your experience with NX. Yeah, so I'm a, a writer on indepth.dev. I have a, a few articles related to NX and uh, workspace structure in, in uh, Angular uh, projects. Uh, in my job, I, I also work with NX on a big application or even multiple applications in the same monorepo that are worked on across teams. So very interesting stuff. And then you have to figure out a nice structure so you're able yeah. to work on the same code base without interfering with, with each other's work all the time. Yeah. I think one of the most uh, asked questions and one of the things that NX has very little opinion on is the structure of the workspace, right? So it... Well, I think there are, there are some patterns that are like uh, canonical uh, through their examples. The Novel team has some NX example repos and there's a couple of books so right. based on that, you can, I mean, we, I spend a lot of time together with Nacho Vasquez studying that first book and uh, trying to reason about like what, what are the patterns that are kind of, uh, that seems to be proposed or recommended by, by Narwhal. Right. Cool. So yeah, I've also been working with Narwhal basically from since it got released, I was already sold on the monorepo idea but I was always having an issue uh, getting Angular CLI to behave correctly, or basically TypeScript more specifically. Hmm. So when Narwhal came along, I could reapply. Like personally, I kind of made the mistake. So when Narwhal first came out, uh, uh, NX Workspace first came out, it was an extension on top of Angular CLI. So it was really a library that you installed in Angular CLI and then move from there. And it didn't have all the flexibility we have today. So I. I kind of stuck to my old structure and basically evolved in something. But um, yeah, I think this is really interesting stuff. And uh, the goal of this um, show and tell today is that Lars will guide me through building his structure. Uh, so we'll first take a quick look at the application and I'll, I'll shortly share how I would share this. Uh, I have basically two ways of doing things. Uh, then we can do this. Code will obviously be available on GitHub afterwards, plus a few links uh, of work to Lars and probably the books, etc. People are watching this on YouTube later on, which you definitely should uh, check it out in the description below. So I think without further ado, we can add in the live screen. And um, yeah, let me quickly walk you all through this app. So what I, what I started working on for for this um, show and tell is a new NX workspace. In this case, I created it with the Angular CLI, but it should be very similar with the NX CLI. And um, we have here a project called API, which is an application, and Booking, which is another application. Um, this These apps are all built inside the applications folder. So here inside app, I got my standard Angular structure. Now I already uh, use the concept of shell module, which I took from one of the examples. We probably want to go over this in a little bit, um, what the reasoning behind it is. But I think um, this is a pretty common structure for people to have like some wrapper. I tend to call this one layout, but shell works as well. Some shared library, like for instance, here we have a confirm button that we want to share and the actual functionality. And I think a common use case would be that we have one of these um, features here that we want to share with another app, right? Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, they are potentially use reusable or shareable across applications. Right. So let's, uh, let's do the E2E there. So what I've always, really liked about working with NX workspaces and what I always my goal is to have the application as small as possible. Uh, this is just something that feels better and I find it very convenient to not have to do anything inside apps or as little as possible. 
but just um, basically delegate everything to a library. So in my structure, I basically have two variants. Let me copy the first one over here, um, okay. which will be you name your library first for the application. And then inside this library, you start adding more things. So let's say we have API core. Uh, we have a booking library that, that has like your best or GraphQL endpoints. Probably have some authentication. Then for booking, I'll have the same. And I'll uh, and here as well, one important thing, I always have a data layer for my API in a separate library. And then for booking, I tend to do the same. Data, and then I generally end up with pages that are things that are being routed to and shared where I keep components shared. Now, one of the issues I generally run into is if I want to have a second app. So let's say I want to add an application called check-in, I think is the example for the booking right. system. And now I have check-in here and I'm going to do the same data pages and uh, shared, but then I come to the conclusion that one of these pages, say page one here, is some of the pages I also want to have here inside. And this is this is my main setup. This is what I've worked with. And for me, it really works as long as you have one application of one type. So let's say one Angular application or one NestJS application. So maybe um, this is a good introduction. Let's I, I can quickly touch on the other uh, topic that I've been doing uh, lately where I don't think it really applies. So another thing I generally tend to have is one admin app and this administers things that are in booking and things that are in checking. Uh, but it's kind of a variant on this one. So you would have a library, a folder here called admin and then uh, admin booking page. And I think this already uh, shows one of the things like you basically prefix things twice and it doesn't really, it doesn't really look pretty also in the package names. So um, maybe we can start uh, looking on how to restructure this or maybe you have something to add or comment on this um, structure that I showed here. First of all, I'm, I'm... 100% with you on uh, having small application projects. And in, in fact, I wrote an article called Tiny Application Projects for with NX or something like that. Right. Uh, and, and with that, I, I basically extracted everything I could until there was only like something like a main file and an app module and an app component and nothing else, basically. Yeah. And then I went through all the pros and cons and the reasoning for doing this in that article. So but as you're saying, when you don't have to touch this application project, there's fewer things that can go wrong. And also yeah. you can develop the other things in isolation and each library has its separate concern or its things to reason about. And it's like having like a drawer with clothes. So you have one for the socks and one for the pants and all of those things, right? So it's easy yeah. to figure out where to put stuff when the structure is already in place for you. Uh, when you join, if you're a new developer joining the team or, or something like that, it's also makes it easier to, to get on, onboarded. Of course, you yeah. could just make folders inside of an application project, but I know yeah, this, this is one of the things. Right now. Yes, exactly. I know this was one of the things that uh, Victor Savkin especially has been promoting since the beginning of, of Narwhal and the NX tool chain. Um, and Small I was wondering, yeah, Are exactly. They... And yeah, splitting into libraries. And I was like, how, what would that look like? Like I was missing some resources and real life examples of this and the, uh, when I started working in this company, I knew that I had to build a, a large application. So it would, would make sense to start looking into how to structure it so that it is scalable in the long run and with many teams joining and many developers. So I read the book by Nawal. Uh, it's called something Monorepo Structures, Enterprise Patterns, something like that. And it's a, it's a short book. Uh, there was not a lot of details, but it was enough to give you an, a rough idea and this is where 
I told you that there was kind of some canonical library types. Another thing to add here, of course, is that when we say libraries in an NX workspace, it doesn't have to be an NPM package library, right. a publisher library. It can be a workspace library, or it can be used as, as both, right? It can be a publishable library that is published on NPM, but you're also using it internally in the workspace for different applications. So it can be a mix. Right. So inside the Angular JSON or NX.JSON, each of the projects has a project type. And at this point, it only supports either application or library. And then some of these libraries can be used inside your monorepo, but can also be published onto NPM. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so cool. So Victor, if he's looking, he should be happy that people follow his word. Uh, I would definitely advise doing so. Uh, generally a lot of sense in what he, in what he shares. Um, yes. But yeah, so actually if we look at this app, the goal would be to have, get rid of these folders uh, and then in your place, in your app, your app component is probably very much like this one, just a router outlet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is also what I very much aim to. I, I love to have just these three files here, app module, app component, and the spec file. And um, that the app component is just a router URL and functionality is being routed to. So I think... Um, yeah, let's get rid of these this admin example because we don't need, really need to add an admin. Um, so I think the API in this case is Nest.js um, does a very similar thing. It, uh, it's very much structured like the Angular app. It has a bootstrap where it bootstraps the app module. And then in here you import stuff. Um, so in an ideal situation, this would also generally be only your app module and maybe an app controller for some generic stuff. But for Nest, I, I generally tend to end up with just an app module. Right. Um, but yeah, let's see what we can do. So um, I think we can start looking at how to generate some of these, um, some of these commands. Um, so let's let's do that. Let's start with the the well. What do you want to start with? Let's let's make it that way. You're guiding me. So what's what would be the first thing we tackle here? Right. Um, or is there something you want to look at first? Well, the the pattern that uh, I've started to love is is these shell uh, libraries or feature mm -hmm. shells. Um, I wrote an article with Nacho Vasquez where we uh, explained and discussed three different variants on that pattern of a feature shell library before the stream started you were asking me about well i saw in your in, in or in my example there was one for a desktop version and one for a mobile version one for a web app version and that's an idea that came from this book that you could have um applications for different platforms but they are sharing all the features but they are maybe deployed in a different way or maybe they're uh, embedded inside of an electron uh, wrapper or something like that. Um, but yeah. there, are all, there are other versions of, of this shell library, but basically that's your entry point into either an application as a whole or a, maybe it's a bounded context or a subdomain. Um, are you still with me here, Demon? I don't see you anymore. You were saying that you had some, might have some connection issues <laughs> or, or maybe. It's... I had a connection break up. I'm really, okay. very, very folks. Um, oh. Yeah, you're talking about shell components, and it's either an entry point to an application as a whole. And this is where I okay, got... yeah, that that's one of the ways you could do it. You could have just one shell module for per application, right? Or you could have one per feature or domain or bounded context, however you like to to group your large application. Right. And if, if you have one per domain, well, then you can compose them. And so between multiple applications. So that's a way of sharing what you call pages, basically. 
Yeah. In, in so, our project at work, we actually call them pages, not shell shells. Right. I I think um, uh, probably a lot of people have their own naming. I, I stuck to pages because it kind of makes sense. Um, but I also tend to change, uh, like my opinion on these things evolves. So I think a year back, I called them containers. Um, but after having thought about this, I think shell makes a lot of sense if you think about the shell, like, okay, this is what contains my app. Um, if you want to quickly reference the existing project we looked at, I got it here in TMP. So it's uh, NGX Narwhal Airlines workspace. Okay. It's yeah. available on uh, Lars's GitHub account, LazyDK. Right. Um, and here we can see that we have... Um, a more complex structure. So inside the apps, we have a booking folder and there we have booking desktop and booking mobile. And then if we look inside one of these, this is the structure we just discussed where uh, the app component has basically a router outlet as its main entry. And then this one loads the booking feature shell module. And if we open the booking desktop, this will look very much the same. So these yeah. files are identical, yeah. So basically on the level of application, there's a little bit duplication and I guess you can probably even extract it out further, but I think I really like this structure. Then if the reason there's this uh, H1 is just to be able to differentiate the apps because right. yeah, it's not a real world app. There's as little uh, logic and presentation as possible because it this was made for a tutorial about the structure of a workspace, not like building a real app, but right. still to, to try to explain it and to be able to see that the different applications can load the same features and, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So the change here is the title in the app component, which is booking desktop at one and booking mobile at a second. Right. Um, now we can look at the application that we prepared for this which is also super simple. We don't have any, um, any layout here other than these three links. Yes. Which I built in the shell and then this has some logic. Um, so we can see how this works. Um, so let's go back to the editor here. So this is, this is the apps in your example. And then in your example, this is the structure on lips. And I think the main, uh, the main change I see here is the shared folder where you have shared items. Yes. Um, yeah, so let's go. If you if you want to uh, elaborate more on this, I'm, I'm happy to, and otherwise we can just start generating stuff and uh, see where we go from there. Yeah, I was about to mention that, as you can see here, the, the seat map uh, has some shared features that is shared between multiple applications. And okay. that is uh, when you want to deal with these shells. Um, that's the well. That's the first thing you you have to ask yourself: Do I want to have shared pages or features between my applications, yeah. or do I have to do I want to differentiate between desktop and mobile, or something like that? And that can tell you something about which uh, variant or which version of the the shell uh, library you would want to use. Uh, there's these three different kinds. But here we're going for a single app, right? So yeah. I would, uh, well, following my structure, I would have this one shell library or feature shell library, uh, as it's called here. And this is what you see here in the prefix is the names I got from the Nawal book. So there's data access, there's feature, and there's, uh, UI for presentational components and, and presentational services. And there's utilities for services and, and standalone functions and stuff like that. Um, you could also have a domain uh, library and a types library. You could have a testing utility library. Uh, I have uh, seen in our project at work, I've seen that we ended up having a configuration module for, uh, for example, for localization, setting that up. So you're basically just configuring the injector for the Angular application and nothing else. Right. Yep. And that module or that library is then consumed by every place that needs to have this information. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's another one that could be reused across applications, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. So what, like, so this is a, you, you were using a slightly different names. You had just data, you had pages and features here. They can be standalone pages, but they can also be uh, like nested inside of, of another page. So it's not a, like an entire page, but it yeah. could be rendered just uh, inside of, of one of these other feature components, or it could be another uh, nested route component. Right, like either uh, child routes or other components that you might want to use at some other things. So this is uh, according to the, um, to the normal standard. When I look at this, I, I try to keep my name short. So if I see data access, I generally call it data. Sure. I also never really added feature uh, two things. How do you do this in your work in your work project? Yeah, we also use the feature prefix, and the, the feature right. uh, libraries will contain what is also known as smart components. So that can right. be routed components. So it can be what's known as container components. Also, yeah, but basically things that are uh, responsible for doing data access and making sure that the routes are being listened to and responded to route changes, all that kind of stuff. Yes, exactly. And and then um, where would you, the actual presentational components or the dump components, mm. where would you generally put those inside a feature or is that more something for shared? Uh, well, shared is presentational components that are, well, you see here, there's a UI buttons library. So that would contain yeah. the the buttons that are used in multiple features. Um, but yeah, you could have a library with reusable presentational components. Um, if you're really strict, like in separating your things, you could have a, a feature flight search and you could have a UI flight search where the UI library right. would have the presentational component, but it's still a very specific one to a specific use case. You, you would probably yeah. not reuse that in more than one or maybe two places, right? Uh, yeah. So you would have the feature library with the container component, the router component, and that would use the presentational component uh, from the UI flight search library. You could do it like that, or you could just put both of them in the feature flight search library, or you could just have what I call a mixed component where you have both the presentational concerns and the data concerns and the the routed um, concerns and all of that in one component or, or maybe a few components. Yeah, so basically I think you can generalize it by saying if you need to use it at two places, you can split it out into its own library, give it a descriptive name, and otherwise there's no issue on keeping those together next to each other. Yes. Yeah, so for uh, people that are not familiar with how this works, these libraries um, do not one-on-one -on -one effect um, tree shaking because if you split it cleanly up inside the library tree, tree shaking will still do its thing right tree shaking will still work as expected yes there, there is another benefit of splitting it up into these smaller workspace libraries and that is uh, when you use it with nx you get what is known as in general terms, it's known as smart builds and small, smart tests or intelligent yeah. tests, intelligent builds. Uh, in the next, it's called the affected commands. Yeah. So that when you make a change in the feature flight search library, you have this dependency graph that you've probably seen if you've worked with NX and you can run the NX affected uh, depth graph. And then you see, okay, so naturally you change the code in flight search. So if you want to rebuild your application, well, if it's a, what's known as a buildable library, you would recompile it. Or in our case, what I have at the end, the example is just, they're not buildable libraries. So they're just imported directly in the application. So you would have to recompile the whole application, but you can basically get incremental builds, first of all, if you do buildable libraries, but you can also do uh, so this feature is only used in one app. So only that app needs to be rebuilt, retested, redeployed. And you would only have to do the tests for this library and the application library and maybe the end-to-end -end test for that application. 
you right. wouldn't have to run all the tests and all the other projects, all the other libraries. Right. So that, that is smart build, smart tests. You can do smart lints. You can even do smart deploys when you're only deploying the applications and uh, that that have something changed that they depend on. Very cool. Yeah, I when I started with NX, I was kind of um, uh, how do you say it? I didn't create that many libraries, just like one functionality, one library. Uh, I think it grew on me that libraries are cheap in terms of maintenance and they're easy to work with, easy to generate, also easy to rename, for instance. So you're not married to them for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, and I start to split up more and more and specifically with the NX Cloud, which is an awesome addition as well. Uh, it, I think it makes a lot of sense to start splitting up more. Right. Um, right. Cool. So yeah, maybe we can go and um, and start generating a at... library. <laughs> yeah, let's let's and actually the, generate it. The first one you would do is is a shell. So we're going to generate an Angular library, and that would be called shell. We quickly yeah. close down this example. Okay, and we want this to live inside the bookings directory, right? Right. right. So we pass in directory. A booking, I'm going to call it singular. Now, I don't have a fancy VS code that execute this for me in dry run, but I can do it manually. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, yeah, I'm used to the NX console and VS code. That's really, really convenient. I, I know there is a person that has one out for um, IntelliJ editors, mm -hmm. but I haven't really checked it yet. Nice. Now, one of the things I have um, learned to do when I generate an Angular library with NX, I generally always forgot to add the prefix. Oh. Then TSLint starts nagging at me because it takes the workspace name mm. as a prefix. So what would be, go I mean, I think routed libraries, routed modules don't need a prefix or routed components. Right. Uh, if you had to choose, you'd just call it shell as well or booking shell. Uh, I would probably call it booking. Booking, perfect. Okay, so we create a library called shell in in the directory booking style scss and the prefix of booking. And let me uh, dry run this one more time. Let's see if this generates whatever we want. And that looks like it's fine. So let's run this now. And I think this doesn't have to install any packages. If not, it doesn't. Very good. OK, so for those of you who are new to NX, uh, we can quickly see what got changed here. So um, I think the most interesting one is the entry get got added inside the project object in the workspace file. And this has the project type library um, with a few builders. Uh, a linter and a test, so we cannot build this library individually. It will be built if it's uh, consumed somewhere. And then another interesting thing that we should look at is the path paths property here inside TS config, right? As this is the the way how we can now consume this thing. Hi, Brandon, in the chat. Hey, we have people in the chat. I didn't even. I mean, this is. We have a lot of people in the chat. Oh, I'm very, very sorry, my friends, that I'm ignoring you. I was just so busy with my guest here. I'm really happy to see you all here. But maybe you can, uh, there was, I don't understand it because it's uh, Nest JS. This, some, someone is asking about user photo, user entities resolver or something. They all required it, required, do you know? So Ober has a, having issues with type ORM GraphQL and then creating circular dependencies between modules. This is a very, very good issue. So um, this is not something I think we would touch on today. I, mm. I worked my, my way around this by having um, basically duplication between my data model and the GraphQL model. Uh, but this is definitely something I, would, uh, I can touch on in a future video. Uh, because I've worked with this, my 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 um, how do you say it? 
I stopped worrying about this when I stopped using TypeORM, basically. And that's not to mm. shame TypeORM. I think it's a great library, but working with Nest and um, NX is just not, it's not cut for it. Um, well, you have one viewer for that episode when you're going to discuss that. Yeah. Ober, <laughs> stay tuned. I will. And I might invite you if you like, and we can talk about this. You um, were explaining the path mapping. Yeah, exactly. So one of the things that I explain in my tutorials, if, if you create a new library, it'll update Angular JSON or Workspace. Connection is breaking up again, it seems. I never know if, if people can still see me because I'm in some back office studio. Okay, <laughs> Ober is saying I'm still here. Okay, I can't see you here, uh, B-Man anymore. And now the screen disappeared. But uh, what was he trying to explain? Uh, it was the path mappings. So when we generate a... Path mappings, and it seems that uh, Bram is back now. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Uh, I'm working on getting a better connection to my my office, but uh, yeah, for now we have to bear with it. So yeah, path mappings in TS Config. Maybe Lars, you can uh, quickly go over what. Uh... I was just doing that. I was still live while you were <laughs> disconnected, um, but Very I didn't get to explain the whole thing. I was trying to explain that. Uh, NX will set up this TypeScript path mapping, and that will allow us to, from from the app or from another library, to reference or import from, uh, for example, this one, the booking shell, by using the name that's in the property here, the add sandbox booking shell. So that, that becomes an, a path we can import from. And as you see, it's pointing to the index TS file, the public API file from that library. So that is where we can explicitly say which things do we want uh, consumers of this library to be able to import. Um, and NX will actually prevent people from doing deep import. So they will, it will prevent people from, or other libraries and applications from importing what is not mentioned in that index.ts file. Right. I think um, if you look at Google projects, they call this public underscore API dot TS. Yeah. Uh, and this is how I also uh, tend to explain it to people. So everything you want to use outside of the library you generate it has to be defined here. Now, if we actually want to use this, I think we can already do this because we have this empty, empty booking shell module. Yes. Um, so if we go into our application here in app module, we can actually add this booking shell module, uh, make sure it's imported, and then we see that it imports here from at sandbox booking shell. There we go. Yeah. Now, big question for everybody, what happens here? <laughs> it fails. And it fails here because it says it cannot find at sandbox booking shell. And this is because tsconfig needs to be, well, your dev server needs to restart for tsconfig to uh, be red. So let's quickly do that. And then once this is here, uh, we load in the empty module. Yeah, there, there's another thing here that is important to learn about NX, but it, yeah, it's, it's probably not a good idea to discuss it today, today, but maybe some other day. And that's the, is it called the NX JSON file where you set up these rules for which libraries can import from which libraries and so on. Right. Maybe, yeah. yeah, we could we could at least take a look, see what's inside of here. Yeah, because the idea is that, for instance, anything related to API will, will and never should import anything uh, Angular to make. Yeah. Like this is probably the most obvious one, like across technologies, you generally don't tend to share a lot of stuff. Right. Maybe bar some helpers, but... Um, uh, not actual or types. You could. That's the nice thing about having Nest, for example. You can reuse types, right? Uh, your response types, for example, from your API. 
Uh, I don't know how that goes in GraphQL. Is that so more of a given when you use GraphQL? So what I tend to do, and which is, uh, I call the Pang stack, Prisma, Angular, Nest, NX, and GraphQL. This is what I've been working with for the last year. And one of the key elements there is code generation from your backend to your front end. So based on my GraphQL API and the queries I want to execute against that API, I can generate a whole lot of code that I can consume inside Angular straight away. Nice. Uh, this is pretty, this works pretty well. And also it has, it, it emits the types, which for instance, if you make a type, uh, if you make a field uh, optional, or if you make a field required that was optional before, your front end will start screaming uh, after generating this code, which is, um, which is a pretty nice feature. But yeah, let's definitely look into that um, once we move on. But um, so we created our shell module here. And then, uh, so that's one. And here, this is also the file where you do the routing, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, and if you're going with the Nawal pattern of a shell library, you will use the for root uh, uh, yeah. routing. So you will import router module for root, actually. Yeah, I and was you amazed will to define see. all of your top level routes here. Yeah. So your pages, basically. Yeah, so this at some point will have, let's say, uh, what is it, flight search, uh, seed map. Yes. Et cetera. And, I was yeah. pretty amazed uh, to see this uh, for root being used outside of app. I never did it that way. So that's interesting. Yeah. Well, with the what we call the, the feature shell, library pattern you have exactly one per application yeah and so so well the important thing is then you need to you cannot lazy load this uh, shell module then because then you would not actually be in the root injector <laughs> with providing these right um, it, it might still work out because this is still the module that imports other modules so it might still work i'm not 100 percent sure but um it's only when using this one shell module per application that you can do it right. this way but it's still it's still nice to be able to not have that inside of the app module actually in my opinion i like it yeah i really like it so this um, is your composition uh, module and library that's where you say okay so these are all of the pages or features i have in my application it's also where you could do uh, directly in this uh, module you could do or this library you could do uh, like root configurations of of something like uh, transloco or ngrx uh, or right. other things that have to provide some root level um, services and dependencies right so you can do that directly in this module or this library or you could have it import from other libraries if you have a lot of things you want to split out into other smaller libraries but this uh, booking shell module now actually takes the function of what in a classical app would module in a classical app where you don't split it up in libraries and where you just have your main routing. Yeah, well, I used to split it into a core module that would live yeah. next to the app module. Uh, but yes, uh, that is it. You, everything that's not related to app component uh, should go in this one. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so what's what's next? What can we do next that, that would be interesting to look at? Well, you are saying, uh, so we want <laughs> we want some page here. Uh, let's stick with the page convention, maybe, or mm -hmm. either that or feature. Let's do feature. So I've, do, I've done pages for way too long. Okay, okay. So the first one was called flight search. So it should be called, uh, well, Either you just call it flight search or you call it feature dash flight search. That's up to you. Well, and that is where I would, that's where I would put in uh, another parameter here for the tags. That's the one that are added to the NXJSON file. And I would do a type feature inside this tag and I would do a scope booking. So that's like, and it, I assume it's comma separated. Yeah, I can't see the the last part right now of the ah. maybe the images are blocking, but uh, you have used it before. So, <laughs> Next. Uh, so yeah. what you do is feature booking. Yes. 
Type. Comma scope. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, scope booking and uh, type feature. That is again like you can use any tags you want, uh, but again these ones are kind of promoted in the the book by Nawal, so that that's how I started using them. And maybe some of the examples. Oh, it's st still booking. I need to make it. Yeah. Right. Feature, feature, feature flight search. Feature flight search. Directory is yeah. booking. Style CSS prefix booking. Uh, yeah, so this is another takeaway for me today. These are great sessions for me to learn stuff. I don't generally generate these with tags. Okay. Well, we could use them to set up the rules uh, yeah. for importing, and that could help us build these la layers, not just on a mental level, but having them explicitly um, enforced by NXS TSLint rules or ESLint in some cases. Uh, so we can say that as a library or any project that has the booking scope is only allowed to import from other projects that has the booking scope or the shared scope. And uh, libraries that have the type feature tag can only import from UI or util something like that uh, so it should never import from an app project obviously but uh, yeah we can reinforce we can enforce that using nx uh, linting rules very good okay so uh okay and then i think we can also quickly uh spin out one of the others uh that's here oh not slick hi um, sarkan in the chat <laughs> Hey there, uh, very see all our buddies here. Uh, let's also create passenger info while we're at it. I think passenger okay. info. So we at least have some things to play with. Um, right. Cool. So these are generated and this is what we can now use in our affected things. And is it true that you can also, let's say, I only want to build things from scope booking. Can you use these ones in your run many? Um, Hmm. Tasks or I've never done that. I've never done that. Do you know Brandon? Yeah, we have actually real Narwhalians here. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Like you're saying, the run many, and you can set a target. Uh, so you can definitely target projects. So is there a filter on tags? Maybe. Brandon says yes. That's pretty cool. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so I'm definitely going to look into this more. Yep, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> ah, no. Uh, yeah. Well, here's We're like an... Uh, questions at the same time. Uh, like an implicit feature request. Maybe something for my open source Sunday to add this, but uh, hey, let's not, let's not look at that right now. Okay. So cool. We created our, um, our three modules, and this is, I think, um, getting very close to what you had in the example. Um, and then for these to work, we actually need something to route to, right? Right, yes. And this is something that you would put here on the top level, like booking flight search module? Uh, I would have, I would actually have a subfolder to the lib called mm -hmm. uh, flight search that has, yep. the, and if you're using Angular CLI, you could generate a component in that directory. Right, a component called flight search, but I think we yes. can copy this one, right? Sure. Yeah, you can probably. So we have this component yeah, that... here. Yes, those two. Yeah. But this one. Um, so in my case, I have a lazy loaded uh, module here. Path. Yes, exactly. Okay. Go over this one, uh, put it in the right spot, actually. And then will this um, top level library module imports this flight search module? The, the flight search module is uh, that's the logic that should be put inside of the booking feature flight search module. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Long name, <Yeah. laughs> but. Uh, you know exactly what what that is going to be in there once you're familiar with these patterns. 
I think, if anything, the long names is probably the only downside of this. And then having, yeah. A, yeah. That's also very much which camp you're on if you like to be explicit or implicit. Okay, so this is our flight search component. Let's also quickly take uh, passenger info then. Uh, from here, passenger info, move it to the feature lib here. And then take over what is here inside the module and put it in the feature passenger module. There we go, get rid of this one. Cool, so now we Hello. have two lazy loaded. Hello, De La Steve. Hey, De La Steve. So yeah, shameless promotion time. Steve is the, the actual founder of the Angular community Discord. Right. Steve is my buddy from a few years back. And uh, yeah, we're gonna reach You're a thousand him. members. I'm helping him. I'm, I'm basically co-founding. I'm, I'm the salesman as he likes to put it. We are the founders, yeah. And I'm, I'm putting it out there and he's, he's doing all magic stuff with bots and organizing the whole shebang. Okay, great. Uh, uh, so cool. So we have two um, lazy loadable or something, if you call it that yeah. way, function uh, modules. So then inside here, this is where we can uh, lazy load these ones, right? Exactly. So uh, we can say, um, path yeah. flight search exactly and since the route inside of uh, that feature module had just an empty path this is where you are defining the path for that library and that also means that you could potentially reuse it across applications or different places in your one application or whatever right but using different path names yeah, and this is also something that's new for me doing it this way because okay. routing was one of the things I did end up with in my main app. Hmm. And it was not because I particularly liked it or something, but it was more like how it grew to be. I'm going to take the path here from path.json and then this is our ES module. Yes. And we can say book flighting module. Oh, pretty fi. Let's be lazy and copy this over. And the other one is passenger info. Right. This one over here. And now I think, yes, this needs to restart because the change then changed. How are we doing on time, by the way? We have nine minutes left, Lars, <laughs> if we stick to the hour. Yeah, that's up to you. I mean, I'm, I'm, for me, it's still, it's not even four o'clock in the afternoon, but for you, it's already 11. Yeah, but um, my wife bought me this one liter energy ah, drink. <laughs> there you go. I can stay up all night. I have there enough. I have like 10 cups of coffee here. <laughs> nice. I have, I have one cup of Colombian coffee, but uh, yeah. We need no, to I'm start. fine to go over, but yeah, we should also keep it at a reasonable time probably yeah i think what we can do is uh quickly see if this works verify that this works uh maybe add some shared stuff and then uh, probably call it a day maybe uh, continue at some other point and look how we would add the api because um i think specifically with looking at the shared folder uh, i'm gonna quickly open your example here okay uh by the way everybody checking out if you didn't know the tmp folder in an Annex project is ignored by default and you can use it to have some reference apps. So if you ever have an app, you need to go back and forth. I've been using this a ton of times and I love it. So it's inside the Git ignore file? Yeah, TMP is in Git ignore and actually yeah. also for Angular CLI projects. Uh, so you can freely do anything you like in TMP and I generally use it as like a reference. If I need to borrow code to put it nicely or just bluntly steal it, yeah, uh, I think the main issue with having API and this just to, to shed a light on why I'm interested in this is what is how are we going to do the shared stuff now we have two apps front end apps booking and check in then we have an API yeah there's there's things to consider uh, yeah. with that respect so 
um, but okay, this is our application. Now we basically migrated this functionality, not everything, seat maps not there, but we migrated this shell module into the booking shell module here. So that means we can get rid of this one, right? Yes. We can get rid of it. So let's not import it anymore. And uh, get rid of it here and get rid of this one here. And then we should at least see in our browser, we should see that we have no errors. Hopefully. <laughs> yep. Uh, there was one a bit delayed. There you go, flight search for it works. Nice. Now there's one thing, uh, we can have passenger info here. And also route. Perfect. Yeah, uh, lazy there's loaded. One... Yep, lazy loaded, yep, so it, it will load. Let's not, um, I mean, I guess we can trust that that works for now. Um, so yeah, and then there's the seat map. I think that might be a nice one to, to do next. So this is one we potentially want to move we want to share between two different applications. Yes. And the other aspect here is that this one actually uses a format date, which comes from our shared utilities uh, library, which we also want to want to do. Right. Um, so it might might be good to first migrate these ones, and then uh, do the actual seat map. Yeah, we would start with the shared util formatting library. Okay, let me pop open the shell. Uh, get a generate command here. So um, we call it util formatting, util formatting. Yeah, like that's just like naming is difficult, right? <laughs> I would I pro probably it would be in, in my live in, in a real project I it would probably be called util date time or something like that that and I would right. put all the utility functions for manipulating date and time and formatting it inside of there I honestly in my libraries I would probably initially stick it in core and then afterwards I would be sad that I did it and that I didn't split it out because that, that that's just how I generally <laughs> uh, tend to roll. Uh, so, so let's see prefix. In principle, like prefix and style doesn't even matter because there should be absolutely no Angular components or anything like that in, inside of here. It should be right. like in right. utility libraries would be strictly, there could be services, Angular services, and there could be just functions inside yeah. of there. Yeah, I think the main reason for me to put style at CSS is here that uh, generate command doesn't ask me for it. Sure. So scope then, is shared then? Yeah. And type and util. Type is I util, think. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. This makes a ton of sense. I'm definitely going to add this to my new projects. I really like that. Have you ever used these uh, linting rules, workspace linting rules? Uh, I've set them up. I've set them up for client projects, but I've never really bothered doing it in my in my own stuff. And and the main reason is that I tend to work alone on a lot of projects, so I don't really fall into these things. But I definitely should make it a habit because it's it's free to add. Um, cool. So let's see. We have the um, have the shared library now, and we have util formatting, so we can uh, pop stuff into here. Yeah, see, we're coming up on the hour, but let's uh, extract these two libraries and and end yeah. after right after that. Yeah, perfect. So this would be uh, the place where we set our format date. Now, in order to use it, as we discussed, we also need to share it here in the public API. Yes. That also means we can get rid of this module, right? There's no need to yes. have an Angular module. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, like um, you could have services, so you could have to use it or you could require having a module but in most cases you can do tree shakeable providers and in that case you don't use need the, the angular modules for anything yep and uh, yeah, definitely right now we don't need it so then where we use this here is seat map component and this should then be imported so let me get rid of this one here local folder 
see if my editor can actually figure out where this lives. Which it can. Yay. Nice. Now this one is taken from here. Uh, and then let's go ahead and quickly do booking confirmation because that's like more of the same kind. Uh, I'll take this command. We're gonna call it. So this is also in util if I'm even shared, right? Oh, uh, did I put this in the UI buttons library? Yes. Yeah, yes. I forgot. <laughs> Where would you put it right now if if you had the choice? Uh, well, it's probably a reasonable place. I mean, the naming is could probably be better, but at least you understand what's going on. UI buttons directly yeah. share it. Uh, then the prefix yes. will be UI, I think. Yes. And then this scope is shared. Type is UI. Oh, that, so I would still use booking. No, this is shared, right? Okay. Yeah. That's the difficult thing. So what do you call it? Yeah. Well, usually it could be your organization, or it could be the system you're working on. What, like, what are they called? Uh, what's the umbrella term for these two applications? Is it like an airlines? Yeah. Or if you have really have no idea, I would just call them workspace, for example. <laughs> yeah, makes a lot of sense. Let's stick with the Sandbox, which is the name of the airline we're oh, working with, yeah. Sand, yeah. Sandbox Airlines. Uh, and then type would still be UI. Yes. Very good. So we can generate that and copy over this one mm -hmm. button when it gets generated. So that should live next to this one. Hello there. Yes, there we are. And this is something, here is something where I saw that uh, this confirm button, we can expose this directly. So have our everything where we need it, just use confirm button module. Or we can have it being imported and exported here and shared. Any yeah, I would, uh, I would export it there. So that is re-exported. Right. You don't need to import actually. Because that will only, um, if you have modules declared in this one, you might need the import. But since we're just, it's just a it's just this public public API module, so we only need exports. We don't even need the imports uh, part of it. So this is the only one we can get rid of this one then too, right? Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. Learn some, and another. Of course, when you have one button, it doesn't necessarily make sense, but. Uh, yeah. This is the public API module for this this library. You can add uh, multiple ones, one for each button. That's the way I like to do it. Uh, a module per applicate or per component or a scam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's my personal style. <laughs> what does it stand for again? Single component Angular module. Yeah, it can be used for directives and pipes as well but still just called scam. Yeah, I, I, this grew on me a lot. Um, I'm not sure who, who, I think several people mentioned it. Uh, Mike Ryan, I know, is one of the people that is fan of this pattern as well. He's like, a component should have one module and that's it. Uh, I, I coined the term, uh, but of course I didn't invent this. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's something that many people have realized, but now right. we have a common term for it which yeah. is a scam. <laughs> I really like popular. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's rename this one so it's uh, so my TS Lint is happy. Uh, and then, okay, I'm just going to nuke this one. So we're going to get some errors here. Um, I, I, did, uh, I did actually a two-part podcast just on this topic of Angular modules and scams. So Very cool. <laughs> there's, there's many like pros and cons and reasoning behind this, if you're interested in that. Yeah, that definitely. The Angular Architecture podcast by Matt Vaughan. Very cool. I'm going to make sure to link it and check it out oh, because yeah. um, there's definitely stuff to be learned here. Um, so I got rid of the booking confirm button. And uh, like if we search through my workspace, we shouldn't really find it um, only being used, but not being defined. So let me change this one to sandbox and now TypeScript will ask me to import it or the language server probably and I can import this from shared UI buttons so, so far so good and we um, 
we basically refactored this seed map component, which still lives inside app here to use the, the things from the shared library. Uh, both here, this, um, this format date, so this helper utility right here, plus this, uh, this button component, which we loaded in here. Um, now this is interesting why this import didn't go as expected. Quickly hmm. try to import it again. Hmm. Did it have other options when you did the context menu? Check. Uh, it it's, no. turns out it just has one. Yeah, okay. there's no. Let me quickly Should be in the see. path mappings, right? In the TS config. Yeah, let's open TS config. Shared UI buttons. Yeah, so we should definitely be able to use that import path. If not, something's something fishy is going on. <laughs> yeah, it seems like something fishy is going on. Shared UI buttons module. Uh, when working with VS Code, this is where I reload the editor because stuff happens sometimes. Yep. It's the, the TS language server, I think. Yeah. I do restart TypeScript service for okay. these kind of uh, things. Uh, what might be relevant, though, is that we never use this one. So I'm not sure if mm. it's included in the compilation. So what we could do is quickly add a um, add this um, seed map module and, and then call it a day. And then maybe at, in a future call, some other BLS uh, look at how we actually split it up and maybe do some API splits as well, because I really enjoy this kind of stuff. It's, it's very interesting. Um, so the, the seat map module would also live in shared then, right? Yes, that is a shared feature or page, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so feature seat map directory shared. Now let's keep this one and then prefix, uh, again, naming. Yeah, um, prefix would be this uh, sandbox. Right, okay, shared stuff is organization name. I like that rule. Uh, and then scope is shared, type is feature. Yes. Yeah, cool, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think the best thing, but probably uh, a lot of developers to keep being consistent, so you're never gonna find the real perfect name, so it's better just to stick some with something and be consistent. And I think the, the biggest uh, moment you're happy about being consistent if you wanna do a search and replace and decide like, ah, uh, you know what? I'm not happy with the name sandbox. Let's just change it uh, to something else. Right. You, you did uh, mention uh, early in this episode that it's easy to rename these libraries. So how do you do that? How do you do that? Uh, I use the, um, the Enix workspace. The Narwhal workspace has the move. Exactly. Yeah. So what you can do is this fella. Um, and this is what I've been using quite a bit. And it's actually one of the reasons I started building NXPM is to quickly do this and to do this without having to know about the names. Hmm. Uh, NXPM is an all other topic by, by itself, but you should be able to, um, I'm not sure if I got it installed correctly, but you should be able to figure out your projects here and you can uh, menu guide it to do a rename. Uh, let's not bother with it right now. I think yeah. it would be cool if we could have this one. So I'm going to do the same thing, copy over seat map, and then take whatever is in the module here and load this inside here. Copy paste driven development people. <laughs> then in our shell, this is where we actually want to refer to the seat map. Wait, did you have two modules inside of that uh, seat map library? Okay, I you think... deleted the other one. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, and this will be seat dash map. Yes. And this will be coming from sandbox slash shared. Yep. And then this 
will also be shared feature seat map module. Even though they are long, I do like the names, I must say. It's pretty descriptive, which is good. And the names are auto-generated by the NX CLI. So you don't right. have to type all of that in. <laughs> right, yourself. yeah. And as you say, it's about consistency. Yeah. And knowing just from looking at that name, you know exactly what to expect from this module. Yep. Shared feature seat map module. Yeah, definitely. And even more so like, okay, my app, this is seat map. If you're working with an app that does like courses, you would have course module or lesson module. So then in the domain, it even makes more comp more sense. Yeah. So you have the scope, right? The share shared is the scope here. It could be booking if it was scoped to the booking app only. And then you have the type of the library. So that's feature in this case. And then as you yeah. say, the domain name or the feature name, whatever your granular scope is here. And then just module in the end. So it's broken and then up. Another type. Right. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. And then another type you would have is uh, data dash access, I can assume. Yes. Yeah. That's that's pretty awesome. And that is where I normally put all my NGRX stuff inside of there, or most yeah. of it. The ones so this the things is... that are concerned with uh, API access and, and yeah, the store, for the, the shared store and all that. Yep. I think this is a classic example where I used to have one authentication library. So let's say I'm building an Angular admin and I have admin auth. And now I want to use parts of this state. So NGRX handles states or basically whatever service with the subject doesn't really matter, but you have a source of truth. Who is the logged in user? And now you want to get to this user, but you don't want to import this whole module because then it will also do the routes if you use yeah. like router module for chat. And uh, they're like, hey, I need to split up my auth state with my auth um, pages. Uh, so let's so at see. At work, I, I actually I use the facade pattern. So I have just a service and NX is, is, NGRX is uh, hidden behind of that service. So you don't even know yeah. it's NGRX. You just have this facade service where it yeah. has servables and it has methods. Yeah, I'm also a big fan of doing this. Um, just hide it, hide the implementation details. And now we have uh, successfully loaded in our button in the seat map. So this all works. And I think the uh, import issue here had to do with the file not being included in compilation or something. I don't know. But um, we renamed it. It works. And this also means we can get rid of these all, uh, these three right here. This should all still compile. It might it might have something to do with that we're if we're in version ten of NX, we're in a solution style workspace uh, in terms yes. of PS, right? And yeah. that is when what you're saying there when when there is no one importing this mo ES module, funny things happen and you get linting errors and all sorts of yeah. mysterious errors. And then this is also what, what Angular a team is complaining about, so it was removed from Angular. <laughs> yeah, they're CLI. reverting, so reverting to the normal um, TS config. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, I think for now uh, that's that's all we have. Is there anything you want to uh, elaborate on so far? Um, yeah, maybe just uh, like what what do you think? Now you've seen how I do it. So, um, for me, the biggest takeaway is I I need to use tags, but that's something I basically just never did. Um, I really like the confirmation that I should split up more libraries into even smaller chunks and that I can even uh, justify having a library that maybe just exposes one or two components. So yeah. this, this uh, enforces that idea that I already have. I think I'm going to go with the shared, um, the shared library structure here. But I'm curious how this ends up if we now also tend to add API. So I think I would love to invite you over and uh, do a similar session for getting these ones split up. Okay. Um, because what I tend to end up with inside here, for instance, is have booking slash API where I expose my API functionality. Um, and another thing that I'm interested in 
is let's look at this one these um these names library names are not um publishable by default uh, we should have things like um is it shared dash util formatting if you want to if you want to publish this right npm yeah you you can do yeah you can do it that way but you would have to add more configuration if you want this the nested level of imports right so i would love that we uh, could look on a, on a next time and say like let's let's say let's assume we want to share our ui library that we made inside this mm -hmm. workspace how would that look and publish that one because that's okay that's also a common use case but in general i i'm going to use the shell pattern i'm going to use the for root outside of my apps this is going to be uh interesting nice and uh yeah Thank you so much, Lars, for taking the time to share with us uh, your your experience with an X. It's been super useful. Um, and I hope to see you soon back on uh, BLS. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. I'll be happy to join some other times and, and see like what if you've done more work, like what does it feel like working in this way? Perfect. Yeah, thanks. And um, uh, yeah, so that's it for today. If, if you want to how to do this, if you, uh, connect to me on Twitter or the Angular Discord. And uh, yeah, we can take a look at some more solutions. Uh, for now, that's it. I wish you all a very pleasant evening and uh, see you all in the next time. Bye-bye.